and we're live. Hello and welcome to the Modern Romantic Podcast, where we celebrate and inspire romanticism through passionate people doing incredible things. Hi, I am tempered by your presence every day and I'm forged by the love in your eyes. Hi, I'm Trey. And I'm joined by... <laughs> and I'm joined by the uh, current glaring co-host of mine, <laughs> Emily. Hi, Emily. Ah, uh, you're so good at the cheese. Um, hi, I'm Emily, and I'm fortified with iron. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so with these puns, I think you can uh, quite guess who our guest tonight is going to be. But Emily, will you please introduce our fantastic guest this evening? I would be delighted. Oh, we are delighted to introduce our, our remarkable guest tonight, Lisa Elias. Lisa, I'm sorry, Lisa is a blacksmith artist who has been fortunate enough to do what she loves, and that is make incredible art with metal. Welcome to the show, Lisa. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Yay! Woohoo, woohoo. Confetti, confetti. <laughs> I could bang my hammers around. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, those may not work as confetti uh, unless you're wearing a hard hat, though. <laughs> right. I've got the headset on. Oh yeah. I can't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank Lisa, you, uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Oh, Lisa, I read that you have been blacksmithing for a little over 20 years at this point. Is that correct? Yeah, I'd probably say at 25, 28, which ages me <laughs> forever. So, yeah. Oh. Um, so I do have to ask, how did you get started with blacksmithing? Um, you know, I was one of, one of those wandering college kids and trying to figure out what to do. I was always doing art as a young kid in my family. That's what we did for activities was just draw like everyone else. And college, I was an illustrator and studying more design work and found glass. Um, so I was actually a glass blower before I ever picked up a hammer. Um, so for many, many years, I was combining metal and glass and just kind of put my glass pipes up to the corner of the studio and thought, you know what, metal's where it's at. This is, this is what I can do. Um, so I've just really figured it out. I pretty much self-taught myself a lot of, um, cool. you know, basically I taught myself how to weld, for God's sake. So, That's and I don't amazing. also, yeah. <laughs> um, but also not that I, I identify as a blacksmith, but I really do call myself more of an artist and a fabricator that uses blacksmithing techniques. So there you go. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I mean, blacksmith does lend itself to other types of smithing that, or other types of metalwork that we're used to hearing alongside blacksmithing. So yeah, sure. Like yeah. knife making and things like that. So yeah. I was going to ask because uh, Cause in our chat here was asking when we were talking about uh, how did you get started? She said, please say Renfair. Please say you got started at Renfair. <laughs> uh, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so it does beg the question, have you ever made any swords before? Uh, funny you ask. Um, I was a visiting artist, or I guess I, you know, I, I taught um, at a actually St. Cloud State University for a summer during a summer program. And um, all of my students, I think I had like 10 students and the majority of them were, were male and mm -hmm. they wanted to make swords and I've never made a sword, but I was like, well, I can kind of teach how to do some cool rivets when we make some weapons. Um, I mean, it was, yeah, I wouldn't say it's anything that I would go after again, but that's what the students wanted to do. And, um, so yeah, I kind of made it up. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Kaz said you're still amazing. <laughs> Yay. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so I'm so sorry. I will save my question. Go ahead. Emily. No, no, go. Um, so since you, that you, um, say that you're more of an artist that employs blacksmith, blacksmithing techniques, um, 
how do you think that that kind of separates you from like a, a standard blacksmith or how do you think that that maybe benefits you uh for what you create uh oh gal okay how do i explain this uh, you know i mean so yes i use an anvil i use hammers i use a power hammer but i do not Forge weld. Forge welding is really a traditional blacksmithing technique to hold two, you know, blend two pieces of metal together. I don't have the patience for that. Uh, I mean, I, I have the utmost respect for blacksmiths and metal artists that do use that technique, but that was just something. It's just like, oh, we have a welder. We have these tools that you could do it so much easier and so much faster. Mm -hmm. So that just kind of resonates to me. Um, and so did I answer the question? <laughs> yeah. Um, I would, I would kind of like to follow that up and ask, um, what are some things that you think that you do really well that blacksmiths could learn from you? Oof. I don't know. I've got nothing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm always surprised that I mean, I, I've been a demonstrator a few times at blacksmithing conferences, mm -hmm. and I have to say, I just don't really know where I fit in to that realm um, because I, I do find myself as more of a fabricator in that world. Uh, and a lot of real traditional blacksmiths, they would probably look at my work and like, ah, oh, that's not blacksmithing. You're, you know, that's a... Uh, you know, a cut piece of metal, you didn't make that leaf, you cut it out with a plasma cutter or something. And, uh, but I don't always feel like things need to be so difficult, so hard. You know, you don't need to hand make your tool. Why not go buy uh, a hammer, you know, that someone else made for you? Because a lot of blacksmiths also use all of, you know, they're very into tooling. And mm -hmm. I'm not, right. you know, I have very, I have very few hammers, as you can see behind me. And, my shop is pretty bare bones. Very few hammers. That's like me saying I only have very few <laughs> scissors, Trey. Right. <laughs> I have I... as many scissors as you have hammers hanging there. <laughs> well, I would say that um, I'd say the creativity or the willingness to adjust. Uh, I mean, there's always that like set principle and set practices, no matter what the what the art form is that people say, oh, well, this is the rule of this. <laughs> I I think that you saying that, um, well, why not look for, you know, something that's a little bit more time safely or a way to do this that, you know, kind of bucks certain certain transition or traditions. I promise I can speak English, my goodness. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's but, absolutely true. I mean, because when I was in college, I didn't know how to weld. So what did I do? I went and bought, you know, what is it called when you glue? Uh, what is, there's a, there's a type of glue that um, I, I think it's called JB Weld. So oh, yeah. I would weld two pieces of metal because I didn't know how to weld. So, you know, that worked. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Until it didn't. Right. And you mentioned <laughs> glass earlier. I've gotten into glass fusion recently mm -hmm. and one thing I learned, uh, well, one thing you learn right away is that not all glass can stick to other glass the same way or yeah. be fired in a kiln the same. So did you, you, you said you, that you're kind of self-taught. Did you have to go through those motions with um, metal too and go, oh, well, I can't just weld aluminum to steel or whatever. I don't know what metals work, but. Yeah. Yeah. Did, a lot of trial and error. You blow yeah. through things. You, yeah, definitely. Yep. Do you prefer to work with a certain type of metal? Mild steel, primarily okay. hot rolled mild steel. I've also done a lot of iron pours. Um, you know, iron is a completely different way of, you know, like forming iron or doing more sculptural work with uh, casting iron. So I've, I've certainly have dabbled with that in the past. Cool. So, yeah. So my iron thing was actually all right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm probably iron deficient because I don't eat meat. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you touch iron enough, you'll still absorb some of it. <laughs> right. Very true. Like they say, cooking in cast iron gives you more iron. 
Yep. Yeah. Really? Yeah, because some of it <laughs> gets into your food, like, so you can like, I don't know, cook a pancake in a cast iron skillet, and you can you'll get iron. It's like trace See, amounts, but it'll boost your iron. Okay, that one. That's the first time I've ever heard that, and I love that. Uh, Seth, let's go buy a cast iron pan. Cool. <laughs> also, um, don't if you have a glass top stove. You don't want to mm -hmm. slide that cast iron pan across it, so be very careful. I was, I was warned about that from my mother um, consistently whenever she got it. It's like, this is my cast iron pan. She basically became Gollum and was like, my <laughs> precious. <laughs> <laughs> as far as like creations and things, um, thinking through that like creative lens what was looking at your first piece that you've ever that you ever made as an artist with blacksmithing techniques how does that compare to what you have done now oh goodness i i hope i'm a hell of a lot better <laughs> at trying to figure things out um gal I, I guess i have to kind of refer back to college i mean i pretty much spent about 8 years in college just to use the art department uh because when was I ever going to have such a great studio, right? And so I just, you know, I did casted concrete, um, you know, pate de verre, which is a type of glass um, and metalwork. So I just kind of combine all these pieces together, thinking I was just, you know, creating something really beautifully wonderful, combining way too many materials. So, you know, just really kind of honing in on your skill. And uh, so... I've, I've learned a lot through the years. 28 years will do that to you. Yeah. Do you um, find that, like, you you're, you do this professionally, so it is not just a passion, it is your living, correct? This is def definitely my living. Okay. It's been my living for, for pretty, yeah, for the last 28 years, honestly. I was a waitress and a server for a little while, until I got fired. And that's where I was just like, you know what, I can, I can make, you know, two toilet paper holders in a day and a couple of towel racks and make just as much money as I would in a weekend waitressing. So that was pretty much how I became a self employed artist, just like I, I don't need to have a lot of money, I just need to survive. And uh, so yeah, I've been very lucky, but damn, is it a lot of work? I mean, I can't say it's been an easy road by any means, but, um, you know, you just keep, keep pushing. Sure. Um, one question that we have from the chat is what is fabrication? So what does that mean in blacksmithing terms or in what, uh, oh, the way you do it or at least, uh, of course I, I make up words all the time. Um, so I probably made up that. That's great. <laughs> I love it. Fabrication. Um, you know, for me, it's just like welding two pieces together, uh, you know, sheet metal, metal um, round rods. I just, you know, as a fabricator, I guess a fabricator could be someone who, you know, builds walls too, for all, for all I know, but. Um, someone who creates. You know, yeah. 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 Fabricate. Make something from bits and pieces. Um, sure. Do you, what are some things that you made, maybe not for a client, but for yourself? The essentials, curtain rods back in the day when everyone used curtain rods. Uh, not a lot. I mean, I shouldn't say a lot, but very, very few things. I don't like to have my work around me. All the, I mean, I, I love what I do. I love, you know, I think I make some nice pieces, mm -hmm. but I certainly don't want to sit and gaze across the room and look at a, you know, a lamp that I made Although I do have a couple of lamps in my house, so never mind. Uh, <laughs> I was like, really? You don't want to look at your own? All right, never mind, never mind. It's kind of like, I lied. It's I like lied. what is it, the cobbler do ha doesn't have nice right. shoes. And I thought yep. about that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> True. I think you I, have a couple of things. Go ahead, Trace. Yeah, I was going to ask you, Emily, Are is there anything that you have made that you just like put in a closet and you're like, nope, never going to look at that again? I mean, yeah, those things exist. I have that box of things. But, I mean, if we're talking about costuming, if I don't 
there are only a couple pieces I didn't finish for whatever reason, but most things either become something else or I finish them or redo them until they're right. As far as hmm. photography goes, yeah, that garbage bag, digital garbage <laughs> bag is got plenty, but I don't I think have... I, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. No, I was going to say, I sometimes have garage sales. I mean, oh. you know, just put your old work out and just say, ah, sale, mm -hmm. garage sale. <laughs> I've done that, like sample sale. So sorry to interrupt you. No, you're fine. Yeah. As far as my art around here, though, no, I'd actually love, because I love what I do. Like, I do photography. Um, more like epic art type photography. So I would love, the pieces that I love the most, I do want to surround myself with. Not because I necessarily created them, but they're like part of what my vision for my world is. So yes, I want those around me. So I guess, I mean, we all see it differently though. So what about you, Trey? Uh, yeah. Um, most of the things for me that get filmed are like concerts, performances, those sorts of things. And yeah, those DVDs are locked away in a safe where no one will see them and they will <laughs> never see the light of day again. Mm. Oh, dear Seth. <laughs> <laughs> Seth doesn't know the combination. Oh, man. Okay. Did you make the lamp that's behind you, Lisa? Oh, uh, yes. I Actually, it's a collaboration. My son is a potter. Oh, cool. And Ooh. so he made the ceramic uh, shade. I guess I'll call it a shade. Sure. But actually, the piece is about, it's about seven feet tall. So yeah. it's, it's a big one. But yeah, my son, he and I, I have more recently started collaborating. That's awesome. So, yeah. Yeah, back in the day when I was in college, I used to blow glass shades and then combine the metal. So Okay. That's kind of awesome. bring me back. Yeah. <laughs> We've um I, I go to the art lab in um Sock Center often enough and we're always looking at ways to combine like pottery pottery with glass fusion or uh, different art forms to see if we can like elevate it somehow or like how can this how can we combine these two arts so that's yeah I can I, I expect a, I expect that from creative minds I guess to some degree because of course if you have your son there who can who has his own skills and you can bond over those things and make awesomeness yep. happen and make money yes <laughs> yes sometimes that's the awesomeness that happens uh, you know yeah. do you have any specific like rituals or certain practices that you make sure you have like to tap into your artistic inspiration or to like get started like do you have to have all your hammers in a certain order or anything like that that's kind of funny um not that my hammers need to be in a certain order but i like cleanliness. I like my floor to be clean. I don't like clutter. I don't like mess uh, because I'm just in such a messy environment all the time, breathing messy air. So I like it to be very neat and tidy. Yeah. And, and loud music. I like to listen to loud music when I, when I work. Yeah. Yeah. But not when I draw, when I draw, it needs to be kind of a little bit more calmer space. So designing is like a different headspace then actually yep, building. Yep, 100 percent yeah i just i do all my designing at home on the t uh you know dining room table and i have a hard time designing here i just think i i need a big big table just to kind of get my ideas going sure yeah um you have a couple of people in the chat that seem to know you or know oh, who you gosh. are um oh. Emmett McGarity <laughs> said, hi there, Lisa. There's a real, it's a real treat to see you talk about your art. Thanks for, oh. thanks to the podcaster for hosting Emmett and Rebecca. Oh, thank you, Emmett and Rebecca for tuning in. Yeah. And <laughs> Stacy said, I have a few of Lisa's pieces and love them. Oh, Stacy who? Wait, Stacy. Denko. Oh, I can see it. Oh, yes. My neighbor, Stacy. Oh, and my I, neighbor, Stacy. I, I, I love her. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Trey. I didn't want to step on your no. toes there. I was just making sure we didn't miss anything in the chat quick. 
So do you have like specific, do you do mostly custom work or do you create for someone to purchase? Like, do you just design something and people buy it or how does that you work know, mostly for you? I primarily write more recently. I've been doing a lot more public art that mm -hmm. is in public spaces on the street and, you know, you know, parkland. Yeah. Uh, that really has been kind of my focus for the last seven years, but I also host a couple of events during the year, one in May where, you know, I do a lot of smaller things that people can pick up and buy. And of course, holiday things, uh, you know, kind of bread and butter. Sure. Uh, and I do a lot of commissions of gates and railings and, and lighting, but uh, you know, I, I got, have to kind of pick and choose what I can do throughout the year. But I, you know, today I had a woman who, oh, I don't even want to talk about it. So never mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't do, okay, I don't do repair jobs, you know, someone's mm. like, oh, I have this piece that could you alter it? Can you repair it? And she's like, yeah, no. Um, so That's annoying. Yes. yes. I, I do all my own design work because I, I don't want to do other people's work or and when I do get asked to do commissions, um, you know, I really also refer people to my website and want to make sure that my style is really what they're looking for. Cause you know, I'm, uh, that, that's what I do best and that's what I want to do. Yeah. And that so, matters. That keeps you happy. Oh, 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 100%. Yeah. So with that, being, with that being said, uh, Lisa, how would you describe your style artistically? Mm -hmm. Oh, goodness. Uh, pretty. <laughs> Just super pretty. Uh, graceful. Uh, um, you know, gosh, graceful, pretty. Uh, Art Nouveau, of course, everyone says, oh, you know, Art Nouveau, which is, of course, true. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Well, how would you describe my work? <laughs> I was uh, not expecting this question to be flipped around. I'm on sorry. <laughs> I would say for metal, it appears dainty, and I love that about it. That's yeah. like a cool juxtaposition of this like hard, you know, I steel, I suppose, and this dainty little, uh, tiny little wispy scroll work, and or I don't know what you call mm -hmm. it, but I love that about your work. And I really like layering. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm more like building up pieces of small dainty pieces of metal to, you know, to kind of make more of a mass. Kind of like the so, lamp behind you. Kind of like, the, yeah, yeah. That's kind of dainty. <laughs> the piece to the right though, you guys can't see it. It's this massive piece that I'm doing for a public space in North Carolina hmm. um, that I'm just starting. So it's going to have lots of ivy leaves kind of uh falling from it Neat. but it's it's a 12 foot i mean it's huge it's it's 12 feet by 12 feet and it's very heavy it's in two parts so, do you go so to, do you go to the location then and set it all up yourself um i'll have to hire someone so uh it will be trucked to north carolina and then installed by someone that's certified to do installations down there right cool yeah i can't wait to see that one <laughs> me too you trey yeah right <laughs> trey you'll mm -hmm. probably get to see it before me yes well uh, depending no. on when it's done that's true um but lisa i have an answer to your question um i would say it is graceful your work okay. is graceful um for me, a lot of your art, your pieces, um, when I look at metal, I typically think of very angular sort of lines. And a lot of your work is curved or it follows like the, the nature, the natural flow of nature. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of curves, a lot of bends and things that you don't typically see with items associated with metal. Um, so for me, it's very graceful. Yeah, spot on. <laughs> Good answer. Gold yes. star, Trey. Ding! <laughs> uh, where do you draw? You've mentioned Art Nouveau, but I do want to ask, where do you get some of the inspiration for your pieces? Mm. 
Well, nature, of course, uh, just kind of walking around, looking at lines. Uh, I know that's very vague, but uh, that's all I got. <laughs> Do you have other people? Well, anyways, no, I guess I don't know really where I was going to go with that, but I'm sorry, Emily. <laughs> no, that's okay. I think our video got a little choppy, so I didn't hear. Um, um, I lost it. I'm sorry. Oh, so like in your journey, because you've done this a, a while now, so you're pretty practiced and you're pretty set on like what works and what doesn't. Um, what are some of the creative obstacles you've tackled successfully? Oh, gosh, that's every every job is tackling something to make sure it stands. I mean, especially with public art, of course, because uh, you have a lot of obstacles. Is it ADA, you know, making drinking fountains? Is it ADA compliant? Um, does it have pointy edges? Does uh, it does it function? Uh, those are massive obstacles. If, is it going to work? Right. Is yeah. it going to stand up? <laughs> yeah, I imagine every job would be its own unique situation. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. What's one? What is one misconception that you wish more people knew about your work? Hmm. I don't know. I, uh, uh, you're, I have no idea. I mean, I think my, my work is pretty matter of fact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it is what it is. It's, you know, it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you have this project you're working on for the public art. Do you have other current projects you can talk about? Um, yeah, actually, I got two of them down in North Carolina that I'm doing. One is for an apartment complex, and the other is for a historical cemetery site where I'm doing an exit and an entrance. And it's not like your typical gate. These are just kind of, um, you know, an entrance and an exit. And so it's going to be kind of more monumental pieces at, you know, it's going to be blocks. They're, these components are going to be blocks away. Uh, oh, and yeah. That one will be built out of core 10 uh, steel and core 10 is a self weathering steel that turns rust and doesn't rust through completely. So you don't have to worry about galvanizing or painting. Um, so that's a different application. And what other projects am I working on? I got a couple of smaller sales coming up. So I've really got to hone in and focus on making some quick cash sure <laughs> if, uh, yeah if we wanted to find your art to purchase it ourselves is that possible for us or our audience to do that oh yeah of course yeah yeah and actually people come through my studio all the time okay. um, you know email and say hey it's our anniversary um you know 11 years is steel uh <laughs> Oh, I, a lot of <laughs> I think so. I think cool. at least the I thought it was actually six, you know, and your sixth anniversary, but who knows? It should be every year, right? Right. Metal every day. Every metal year. every day. Yeah. That's our new motto. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it's uh music or works by Lisa Elias. It's metal every day. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That works. <laughs> Uh, and you were correct, Lisa. It is the 11 year anniversary that is. Oh, stupid. it is. Wow, you're fast. Jesus. <laughs> now, um, no one has an excuse to miss that. Right. Nope. Yep. Lisa Elias' door is always open. Okay. <laughs> the new um, 11 line by Lisa Elias. Right. It goes to 11. <laughs> 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 Okay. That's uh, funny. <laughs> I love it. Right. Lisa's clearly worked in marketing. Emily, get out of my brain because that's exactly <laughs> where my brain was going for. Uh, Lisa, I am kind of curious. Um, I is there? You mentioned before that you really like working with a particular kind of metal. Um, 
I am kind of interested in the different colors that can uh, come out of different metals. Mm. How do you, how do you get all those color variations that we might see on like on um, a statue or a piece of artwork? Are there different techniques that kind of get those color variations? Oh, well, totally. I mean, it depends on what the material is. I mean, obviously you can paint a surface, you can mm -hmm. paint metal, um, you know, by either using a powder coating technique or just straight up, you know, car paint for crying out loud, uh, you know, core 10, I talked about that, that self weathering steel, you don't really do anything except let it rust. And that mm -hmm. kind of turns a really lustrous velvety golden brown, you know, rusty brown, uh, you, you know, if you're using bronze, obvious, I think you can, I don't do a lot of bronze work, but you know, you can leave it out to Galvin or to patina to, you know, kind of a greenish tint, but, uh, you know, that's all what, what the weather is or, sure. or, you know, it's a weathering thing. Mm -hmm. Um, or so, yeah. Did I answer it? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Archer in our chat was asking, uh, color case hardening or flame coloring? Uh, well, flame coloring would probably be if you're using maybe copper or mm -hmm. maybe stainless steel. I primarily, like when I do interior work, I don't do any painting. I will, after I'm done fabricating something, and, you know, a lot of it is hand hammered or forged uh you know, thrown through my, my forge and then my power hammer. So it's got like some variation in that um, texture and, and the material itself. And so when you're done making something or when I'm done making something, I would grind it down with a, you know, like a brush wheel of a handheld grinder. Mm -hmm. And then I would put a wax coat over it and I would use this, uh, you know, this wax coat kind of hardens it. And also just lets all the beautiful variations of steel come through. But it's, you know, it's all going to be kind of black, gray, grayish tones. Uh, not like anything super shiny because I'm not using stainless steel. So right. hope, hopefully I asked or answered that question for him. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So just a natural wax is really what I think works best for my work because it is, you know, very organic and I, I want it to feel natural. Yeah. And yeah. I think you've achieved that for sure. Cause it does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, we have more fan mail for you coming in. Uh, this oh, one Lord. coming from <laughs> Diane Dawn. Uh, oh, she Diane. <laughs> <laughs> she said, whenever I visit relatives in Italy, I bring them a piece of Lisa's. Oh, it's true. She's a great friend and a very, um, yeah, she, she's great. So thanks, Diane. Yay. Yay. I love that you have um, an awesome support system here tonight. That's great. I, yeah, I've got some good, good people around me for sure. Yep. What is um, part of the design and creation process that you get the most excited about? Uh, boy, a getting the job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you get a, a you know, a, a larger piece, um, you know, and they may say in the request for qualifications, like, oh, for, or for this proposal, like maybe it's going to have a lighting incorporated into it. And just like, oh, my, I was just like, oh, I've got tons of ideas. Um, so, you know, just kind of really digging through um, words. I actually will Google words <laughs> and just yeah. try to like think, how, how can I see an image um, that makes sense for me and kind of go with that. Like recently I did a piece for Anoka Ramsey Community College here in Minnesota. And it was a, it, it was a piece to be installed in the nursing and business school. And so they wanted something that wasn't like going to say work. I mean, like, how can you interpret nursing like a public art job? And so I was like, oh, okay, well, nursing, what a stressful job. 
college, what a stressful time that is for people. So, it, you know, stress was just kind of like coming at me. And so I created a wall piece that was of these flowing lavender leaves and um, just kind of blowing gently. And the wall was, I mean, it was a very large piece. The wall was about 16 feet by nine feet. And so it was me trying to create something that made sense for this space, for this school. Um, and so lavender, because of its medicinal qualities and the scent, of course, it's calming. And, and besides that, it's dang beautiful. So yeah. that was, uh, you know, just kind of researching what seems to make sense. And of course, some days I have horrible drawing days and design days that I just have to leave and then go to the studio and make a trivet, <laughs> you know, something easy. I oh, forgot sakes. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> so I've been there. I've, yeah. Same. <laughs> uh -huh. same. Uh, for anyone who's listening, that's been following on the Ren Faire costume uh, journey. Yeah. There, I've definitely had days like that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, did you start? Well, actually, I don't know this about you either, Trey. Or at oh. least if we've talked about it, I don't remember. And that is like for myself, I I never considered myself uh, someone who could draw. That's my mm -hmm. dad and my sisters. They're good at that. For some reason, that like skipped me. So I've worked hard at sketching. I have a bunch of colored pencils and paper. <laughs> and I've worked really hard at sketching so that I could draw like dress designs so that they looked like human beings wearing clothing because <laughs> otherwise like I'm a stick person kind of girl you know, just... and so I, I'm wondering this is a question for both of you actually did you have to work at drawing to design or could was that something you were already kind of good at Trey um <laughs> for certain th uh for certain things I had to really work on it like I still, to this day, cannot get faces correct. They all kind of come out looking like a, a Pablo Picasso, like Cubism style. Awesome. Uh, so, um, but when it comes to things like flowers, um, I really got good at drawing irises. Um, and I got really good at drawing lilies. Um, and weirdly enough, I can draw hands with like a scary amount of detail. Um, but when it comes to, uh, like, it's kind of insane, but, um, for, for other things, it, it, it takes a while. Yeah. Well, for costuming though, like to design a, a garb. No. Yeah. No, still can't, still can't draw that stuff to save my you life. You can draw a hand with intense detail, but not a costume. Seriously. Wow. Um, uh, like I will literally almost trace it. Uh, whatever I'm like designing. So if it's a pattern for something, mm -hmm. I will almost like devoid the picture of all color and all like whatever and just leave the outline of it. And I've essentially traced it, but that way I can start going in with my level of detail that I want and put it over top of that. Okay. That's valid. I mean, it's all valid. I just thought I'd ask. All right, Lisa, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, we drew all the time as a family. Um, okay. You know, my uh, I'm the youngest of nine, like I think I told you. And so there was just a lot of sitting around the table with a pad of paper and coloring books and constantly drawing and drawing. And uh, most of my family are artists. And so, you know, painters, my one sister, Mary, who recently passed, she was an amazing she could do portraits like every, you know, just like sit down and watch a band and have a, you know, a portrait of them already completed by the end of their awesome. show. But uh, one of the funny things as a kid, I just remembered about this. We have a family room um, up, you know, uh, that my father built. We live in a small little rambler and dad built this family room that my mom would, um, rather than wallpaper or paint, she literally wallpapered all of our drawings and our hands on the wall. Cool. So it was, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, it had to go away because moths were 
you know, like when you use not decoupage, but um, you know, like flour to, glue, to put yeah. the glue, yeah, the flour in the water. So bugs would lay eggs. So <laughs> had, that that place had oh, to get no. torn down, or the wall did. It, so yeah. Uh, so it was a good idea at the time. That's really a neat yep. idea, though. Yeah. That was great. So anyways, yeah, drawing was definitely always part of my my life. And then, of course, in school, just always taking art classes that involved illustration or, uh, well, yeah, illustration. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah, she can draw, Trey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can draw. Well, it's very helpful. I mean, I need to tell people, you know, like to show a client yeah. or do proposals of, you know, I hand draw everything. I don't use CAD drawing. Sure. Um, so that's, you know, it's either a curse or a benefit, but that's just how my brain works. I have to do everything by hand. Yeah. That's how I do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, out of all of the pieces that you've made, do you have any favorites? Um, about a year ago, I installed a piece outside of an apartment complex in Minnesota that was uh, made up of three large rings that incorporated lighting and a drinking fountain and a bench. And the, the apartment complex, it's called the Bower in Edina and the bow, a bower is like a, you know, a garden sacred space, or, you, you know, you're kind of walking into this trellis uh, enchanting area. And so I kind of wanted to create something like that uh, in front of this building. So I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. It was a pretty complicated piece. I mean, actually really, really complicated. I mean, it had these three large rings that were kind of trellises uh, and, you know, like 12 feet high, 12 feet wide. And, you know, with these flo floral elements underneath it and just trying to really make sure that I was staying true to what I wanted this piece to, you know, have, have it kind of like the secret space. I, you know, I'm, I was pretty proud that I pulled it off. It works, except the drinking fountain didn't work for about a year and now it's back on. So <laughs> <laughs> that was a bummer. Yeah. <laughs> that was a big but bummer. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually was trying to find that. Uh, oh. to, to uh, find a picture of it. So if any of our uh, guests happen to have a link to that, I would love to see it because it sounds incredible. I think, well, it's on my website and unless oh, maybe I'm, I'm probably explaining it pretty bad. <laughs> uh, you know, in my mind, it's, it's amazing. It is under, <laughs> yeah. on her website, it's under the outdoor heading and it is okay. like the second picture over. It's the lighting is kind of a purple and it's yeah, these magenta. rings with flowers inside of them and you can kind of see the bench but you can see the drinking fountain oh okay There's, i love this yeah it's the photo oh. we did as the background to the promo for this oh episode. yeah yeah my head was yeah within the rings yeah mm -hmm. okay I, yeah i like this that's really cool. uh I bet it looks awesome with when this there's all snow on the ground too cuz in this picture there's a little snow but like when when it's all snow with the purple light I think that would look really cool. Yeah. No, that's that a big piece. Neat. Yeah. That, that was a lot of engineering. A lot of engineering went into that. Right. So what is that? Is that like bolted to the ground somehow or it is it cuz it's not yep, actually it's, underground? It's actually, no, it is. It's, is it's it? bolted underneath. Yep. And then they put pavers on top of it. Okay. So it's, it's probably about 12, probably a foot in ground. Okay. Um, wow. Yeah. Yep. And that, that installation neat. that happened like, oh God, I'm always installing a job when it's like just freaking cold outside. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, right now when it's uh, nice and warm. The snow is about to happen and we're out there for hours just like, oh, okay, it's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's Minnesota. We don't, we don't care yeah. if it snows. <laughs> it's always supposed to happen in the summer, but it never does. So. Right. 
I'm always installing in the winter. No, with some of your pieces, um, being that they're like uh, public art and things, have you built a relationship with any particular company or installation team, or does it vary with each job? It definitely varies with each job. With public art, a lot of times you are applying along with, you know, 20 to 100 more other people that are trying to get the same job. And so every, every city, every, you know, arts organization or a lot of, uh, buildings like, uh, you know, more, these apart, like the Bauer, the building, I think most projects have to have some percentage going towards public art. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of competition for those. Well, and really of course I don't, I don't get them all. <laughs> And still, the ones that you have had are incredible. Like, I love the work that I've seen so far. Thank you. I think you should win an award for this um, the stop sign post. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> Why? What kind coolest... of award should I get? <laughs> that's the coolest stop sign ever. Well, it wasn't just one. I did about oh. 250 of them. What? Oh, wow. That's also yeah. under outdoor yeah, on our yeah, website. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. I don't think anyone sign. realizes. Yeah. Oh, so I didn't in, realize there were that many. Okay, the coolest yeah. collection of stop signs ever. That Those are yeah. so neat. I would live yeah. in that neighborhood. Well, maybe. I don't well, know. <laughs> but I so, well, no. want to. I mean, actually, the way that that job happened, though, was um, with, I work with Public Art St. Paul and the city of St. Paul, and they had a team of myself and two other people. So we were a team of whenever they were reconstructing streets, if they were putting in new sidewalks or rain gardens, uh, you know, widening the streets or putting in different curbs that a percentage of those funds would go towards public art. And so every neighborhood had a different amount of money and being on this committee, we were kind of stuck like, well, what kind of work can you do in the right of way of traffic? You know, it, you were working in basically like sweet little neighborhoods, um, but you couldn't do anything on busier streets because of someone's going to hit it. You know, yeah. I mean, there's just, there's a lot of obstacles of what could happen with public works and what, as an artist, what can you do? So one of the things we looked at was just, you know, kind of walking through these neighborhoods, just like, you know, there are stop signs everywhere. These posts are crooked they look like shit and <laughs> um why not try to make a sign have something interesting to hold it up uh so that's kind of where the stop sign happened and yeah i did 250 of those and then also some no parking signs so. oh yes yes that yeah. is such a cool way uh, you know i would never have maybe thought to take just the the crappy T post or whatever they put stop signs on and turn that into art instead. That's such a cool place to put art intentionally. I think so. Yeah. I mean, we look at it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's um, that's really awesome. Although, did you and get it, really? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say every one was handmade. I mean, I, yeah. it, it, this was me making every single one. So. It was a big to do. Was it tedious? Did you get tired of it? Um, I wouldn't say I kind of got empowered by it. Honestly, it's just like, oh, okay, one down. Only you know, well, every neighbor like I didn't do two hundred and fifty all at once. I you know like maybe eight months would go by and I would get another job with a different neighborhood, or you know, oh, a year okay. would go by. Um, but you know, like I think the, there was one neighborhood where I probably had about 60 of them. And I mean, it kind of came down to, it was just like, okay, I got one down and you know, 59 to go and I got two down. And I mean, it kind of became a game and I really enjoyed it because I work by myself all the time and I talk to myself out loud all the time. And so I was just like, all right, I got 50 down and only 10 more to go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not bored. I am so happy. You know? <laughs> That's the way to do it. <laughs> you know, but of course you're swearing inside, just like, oh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I'm sure people drove through those neighborhoods and went, oh, that's so cool. How do we get that? Oh, and then uh, yeah. now you've got. Or people say, what the hell? Why would anyone spend money on this? Well, those. People, I mean, that's that's true, too. Those that people happens. can just go. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> spend money on that. Like, no, this is this is what art is about. Yep. I yeah. feel like there's there was a point in my life and where I live near Chicago and all of the buildings, instead of being these cool old architectural feats and architectural having architectural interest, all of a sudden all the new buildings going up were just boxes. And I started to think like, I don't like where we're going architecturally and I I don't like this. I don't want to live here. This is boring. And I remember visiting uh, Minneapolis and I remember visiting Charlotte, North Carolina, and thinking, that Charlotte is like, they have these details in the buildings that like I didn't see in Chicago. And even some of Minneapolis had art in places like that's what makes the life around you interesting. And that's what makes the, the that's what makes your world. So yeah, okay, who is going to spend money on this? This is your world. This is your yeah, surroundings. Yeah. So if you want just plain boxes because you don't want to spend the money, then go live in that world. There's plenty of them in Chicago. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're not that Chicago is devoid of art, but I would rather have a stop sign post like this one. Yeah, spend that. Yay, on. thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm just going to go write a grant to have more of these put into Charlotte. Yeah, specifically your neighborhood, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have one at just like every post and be like, mm, yep, I commissioned that one and that one and that one and that one. <laughs> I'll have all the signs in my yard just so that I can have all this art. <laughs> um, Lisa, is there like thinking of projects that are still to come? If money were no object, if you had all the time in the world, uh, who would you want to come to you and say, I want to commission you to create a piece? Who would that person be? Or what would that council be that came to you? Oh my God, I don't know. Wait, all the money in the world? Is that what you said? Yeah, they're giving you <laughs> unlimited funds. No matter what you need, they will pay for it. Oh gosh, that's a hard one. I mean, I feel like I'm living the, I mean, not living the dream because yeah, it's hard work for sure. Uh, you got me. I mean, I don't really know where I would even begin to think that. Um, Maybe a celebrity? I don't know. <laughs> sure, why not? Um, uh, um, I would say if there was all the money in the world, uh, what m types of metals would you buy more of? Uh, you know what? I really do work with mild steel, hot what rolled steel. Wants, yeah. I don't, yeah. I mean, that's that's how I, I know the material. I know how to yeah. use it. So it does what it needs to do for me. I think I think yeah. um, Diane said here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna second this one. Oh God, <laughs> George Clooney. Of course, of course. Yeah, if, George, if you answered your phone and it was George Clooney on the other end, wouldn't you? Yeah, no thanks. No. <laughs> Take a hike, George. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, of course. Come on, George Clooney. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Clooney, you can call me George. <laughs> <laughs> so George Clooney calls you and he wants you to just use your own creativity to make whatever you want for him and money is no object. What would that be? Yeah, sure. Oh. Why not? Oh, good Lord. You'd probably oh. have to think about that a while. I feel <laughs> yeah, like 100%. that really requires a lot of thought. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm not a spot. Yeah, I'm I'm a slow thinker. I'm going to process that one. Mm -hmm. I think George would appreciate it if you did put some good thought into it. Mm. <laughs> George Clooney, if you're listening. Although, which home? I mean, is this this is probably the one that um, his home on Lake Como. Right, Diane? I love that you know Sorry. this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was just in Italy, but <laughs> oh. and Lake Como, so mm, perfect for his eleventh anniversary. 
This is oh, perfect. Lord. I think we need to. <laughs> she just said Dolly. So <laughs> she's funny. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> Diane, you're great. You, you should. You should have her as a guest. Yeah. <laughs> She's super romantic. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. Cut that out. <laughs> <And it's> like... <laughs> oh, that was great. I love that. <laughs> George, if you're listening, my email is emily at themodrom.com and we'll put you in touch with Lisa. Mm-hmm. And if you'd like to donate to the show, you can always email us at please sponsor us. We love you at themodrom.com. Yes, that is a real email. Or Lisa needs new work boots. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lisa uh, needs whatever. new work boots at themodrom.com. Oh, now I have to make that email. I'm going to go do that right now. Yes. <laughs> right in the middle of the show. <laughs> We're going to make a new email just for Lisa. Lisa needs new work boots. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that was awesome. Thank you, Diane, for yeah. that. I appreciate yep. that. What a wonderful friend. Yep. <laughs> the best. Um, you mentioned that you might have some uh, some works currently going on that you'd like to talk about. Uh, what are some upcoming projects that we can look forward to? Uh, well, was I telling you about the project? In, well, two of them in North Carolina. The large... Um, it's like this big... Oh, gosh. Half moon shape that's going to extend about 12 feet high mm -hmm. and it's for an apartment co complex that's going to be called the um the ivy or alta ivy god i should get this down so i mean obviously it's going to have some loose ivy vine component mm -hmm. streaming or gently falling from it and it will have lighting and i really thought the lighting would be kind of interesting to have kind of some blue hues but they kind of nixed that idea and yeah just we're just going to do some basic white lighting incorporated shining up and down so that's yeah. that's one fun one uh oh, nice. so yeah i like the and lighting idea i mm. really love lighting it's important there's some mm. awful lighting out there <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> Well, um, I was kind of curious because you've talked about how you've done the metal. Your son is like looking at the lamp specifically behind you. You did the metal component. Your son worked on the lamp shade. Um, do who works on the electrical wiring to kind of connect all those pieces together? Well, that would be my husband, of course. Of course. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I mean, I, I do figure out some of the lighting, but I'm not, you all list, I mean, none, I, I use you all listed components, but if I'm doing something for a restaurant or a public space, mm -hmm. I will hire that out to an electrician. I mean, I have to, I, you know, I don't want to have that liability, of course. I don't, I do not <laughs> nope. know. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's yeah, not so, the phone call you want. Yep, but <laughs> gen generally it's my husband. He's, it's a family affair around here. I love that. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. You have to work with everybody, your son and your husband. And... Yeah. So you talked about shows coming up, or at least a I... show. Tell us mm -hmm. when and where that is. Oh, I have a couple of shows. One's a smaller show at a space I do every year. It's, on, it, it's in South Minneapolis. Okay. It's called 60 Artists on 50th Street. Ah. And it's basically on 50th and Bryant. It's a really great one day show. Uh, they have just a, a variety of really high caliber artists. And then the following weekend, I've got to get my shit together. And uh, my studio will be open for the full weekend uh, for a open studio event that's happening in Northeast Minneapolis. So there's going to be a lot of different buildings that are open to the public. And of course I have a little space of standalone building where I do all my work. And my son more recently after graduating from college has moved in doing his pottery. So he will be showing his work as well as I. Awesome. So That's yeah. So, cool. so if, if you ones. need to buy a ticket to Minneapolis, you should do so right away. 
Exactly. <laughs> yep. You can get over here and check out Lisa's art and buy it all up. Buy it all up. Oliver's. Uh, you got to buy Oliver's work. The Potter. But yes, you're, that's your son. Oh, yes. yes, yes, yes. All of yeah. were yes. Uh, and if you would like to donate, we would like to announce that we have a new email. Uh, Lisa needs new work boots at themodrom.com. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we'll, um, for, we'll forward any Red Wings. To you. <laughs> <laughs> we will, of course, of course, forward it to you. Um, Lisa, uh, to make sure that our listening audience can uh, connect with you and stay up to date with a lot of your installations and your work, um, how might our listening audience be able to do that? Uh, well, I just started Instagram. I'm really new to this techie stuff and they can find me. Gosh, I think, oh Lord, you asked me the wrong questions. I think it's <laughs> Lisa Elias, right? I mean, uh, search me, Lisa Elias. Uh, yes. On Instagram, think, it's Lisa Elias metal. Yeah. Thank you. And then my website is Lisa Elias metal studio.com. And how else? Uh, I could, yeah, I guess that's it. I was going to try to figure out something that was funny and savvy, but <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I was really hoping you were going to say carrier pigeon. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that too. You know, I'm very, I just bought a cell phone like two years in. So this whole tech shit is wow. totally up my alley. Um, I see that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad you dove in anyway, so we can see. You totally dove work. in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On Lisa's website under contact, there is uh, there are some other ways to get a hold of you. So if anybody out there wants a custom piece or something awesome, or just to uh, donate to your workbook fund, it, there's that <laughs> as well. I should call it a vacation fund. Now I need a vacation. Yeah. Yes. I, I think people would feel good about donating to that. Sure. Yeah. Well, Lisa. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, uh, -uh that it's too. No, I was going to say, okay, I'll, I'm going to go to Italy with Diane. <laughs> I was say, it's the Lisa stocking George Clooney fund. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with Diane. <laughs> you get to, you get to Italy and George just doesn't lower the blinds. He just goes, well, oh, let me just open the blinds. Hello, Lisa. Welcome <laughs> to my villa. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lisa, uh, I, we have had such a blast this last hour. We've learned a lot. Um, you have shared so many wonderful things about the artistry of, of really what you do with metal and the incredible creative artwork that you do. Um, it is not just functional. It is also beautiful to look at. And I cannot wait to see this installation in uh, North Carolina so that I can go visit it in person. I'm so excited. Yay. <laughs> I'll have to come uh, visit just for that. Oh, yeah. please. Um, but looking forward to that. Um, as we wrap up this episode here today, um, it was such a pleasure to have you on. Um, this episode, along with probably every episode, always will be in memory of Joe Capone, our moderator, fellow comedian, a uh, passionate encourager and greatly missed friend. Find us pretty much wherever you tune into podcasts. For updates, announcements, and more, please follow us on social media under Modern Romantic. Uh, thank you, everybody. And I hope you forge whatever day you're going to have with iron, a tempered steel, and a good book. Oh, so well, well said. Yeah. Thanks I was so much for having me. Oh, yeah. Thank you for coming. Have a great night, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.